Hello there everyone, welcome back. We have ourselves another match with Solari to bring you. And I will have to be perfectly honest, I had had like two, three extra matches between last episode and this one now, where I have fought up against Tao. They were pretty short-lived episodes or matches because I tried to continue to tr essentially be aggressive in that matchup. Trying to see how aggressive I could get with some mixed results there. But... I don't know if it's all that interesting to watch because it is just me just essentially trying to dive into, what is it, run into a brick wall essentially. And I'm stumbling my words a lot there, I can't imagine why. But nonetheless, if nothing else, this video should cement that the fact that I can beat Tau, at least in terms of straight up combat. I think I am confident in that, especially since in this match, I go back to my roots. I go back to defensive strategy. Let him make the mistakes, let him come to me as I slowly lurk forward there, trying to get him into a corner where I can eventually pounce on him. It's no more trying to be aggressive, that's more like specific windows where I can do that. Dive on him aggressively here, we're going back to try and true. The t where the initial two matches against Fossil and Solare were to my advantage, I want to argue. Even against Fossil, I want to say I was in the kind of the winning engagement there. Hell, I kind of have a solid idea how to deal with the beacons when they stick to me there. I kind of proved that a little bit when the Dauntless got uh, stuck with a beacon er early on against the match of Fossil. I just have it way back behind the rest of my fleet almost out of reach of the bombers, and even if he were to send bombers after him, he has to send them through all the other cruisers, and there's almost no way, aside from maybe an occasional seeker missile, that he can actually hit that Dauntless. So I think I can prove, even with beacons stuck on me in the worst case situations, I know how to deal with that some. It's just a matter of really getting down, the positioning being more tighter, on my adjustments with the Manta Bombers, because hell, even if Silent Running is down, I could just easily high energy turn and have my f ships behind the rest of my fleet, if they're close enough to get her. So, we are fielding the two Overlords, the one Tyrant, the Dauntless, and what this does for me specifically, is it allows me to field a second Widowmaker. Something that, at least for the first time against Solari in the last episode, is the one weakness that apparently had where even though he decided to dive on it, it did eventually go down and I was left essentially blind. It was more my own undoing quite frankly, accidentally boosting the Widowmaker to get spotted quite frankly. But this is actually a good convenience for me. It feels a little unnecessary I will argue, especially with all my other matches having not worry about losing the first Widowmaker in the begin with. This seems a little bit redundant, a little bit unnecessary, but it is a good fallback plan. On top of the fact that Dauntless, even though it does not have extended sensors, it does have the ability to spawn reinforcing Cobras to at least be like sacrificial spotters a little bit. Ideally, I would like them to draw out a Manta Bomb wave to have him almost guarantee kill it because he's not really going to reliably kill it quickly with the rail guns and ion cannons. Hell, he even just flew a ship into a mine for whatever reason. Which... It's fine by me, because what he's actually fielding for this matchup is what I would argue to be the worst fleet composition he could field. He is going with the Custodian, the Stronghold, and three Widowmakers with possibly the Messenger, which I assume is what just died there. I'm going to assume. It could have been a Castellan, which I seriously doubt it would be, because he's content leaving his Castellans to corner the map, as we've seen before there. But... I argue this is kind of the worst fleet you can field on me, because I have enough lances to actually deal with these wars relatively well. The torpedoes are actually doing really short work on them. With some a good spread, it is actually pretty difficult for them to avoid getting hit by at least one of those torpedoes. So long as I'm smart about how they're arcing together. And like I said, I have three lance-capable ships, and they are always going to hit those uh, wardens. And they all have bonus shield damage too. So, the shields without a doubt are going to go down in a hurry, and hell, even the first warrant dies without really any effort. As Seeker Missiles come on out, the Manta Bombers are sure to follow, but I'm basically watching for the Manta Bombers. And we get that. Just watch. See how easily they are to deny, especially when he has no vision, and hell, even then. 
I talked about how my Dauntless now has Auger Disruptor to be used as an offensive means to deny the Manta Bombers, and even weaponry in general. I can still use this defensively if he decides to use the Warrens as the sacrificial spotters. It actually works really damn well to deny these Warrens as well. Because since they are frigates, despite all these lances, they could take a long time to kill if I'm not lucky about my macro batteries or even getting an extra torpedo hitter or two to soften them up. They could still be troublesome as far as like keeping, keeping, what, keeping vision on my fleet there for the custodian. But as it stands now, these things are going to die in a moment. The lances are doing his work. He even completely forgot about them as he's just now decided to do a salt run. And he quite literally made them a sacrifice as he decided to ram me for some stupid reason as well. But I think I could take them out relatively well. At least I have a nice window for it with the Augur Disruptor. It's not just for offensive plays, it's good at denying his scouts, keeping them blinded so that way he cannot use them or get any value out of those wardens. I'm just on a bit of a clock a tiny bit when I have to kill three of them though, because they, like I said already, they can take a little bit of time to kill. But. When I correct the fact of having the Dictator over this tire here, at least I have a bomber that can reliably kill one of them off. At least I want to argue, there is a chance it might survive, but the Dictator alone can take out one of them almost by itself immediately. Especially if I can get some torpedo hits on top of that. But, he is going to be kind me all day there. We do know where the Stronghold is, so just for the sake of your sanities, I'm just going to push this forward into onto the next engagement. Alright, fast forward maybe a minute or so there, we got ourselves a Cobra reinforcement from the Dauntless, which is a little bit further behind because I had to dodge some Manta Bombers and I chose to go to the Gas Cloud rather than Silent Run, but we're going to use this Cobra for what I mentioned before, is a, a secondary way to detect the Custodian. And unless he wants to infest in boarding this, unless he wants to infest in like bomb using bombers after it, this thing will be really damn difficult for him to kill with a single Custodian. Hell, he throws down a second beacon there because he can't, doesn't have the window, let alone an opportunity to actually do the shield damage. Not really do the shield damage to put on a ship, but he's pretty much defenseless at this point, as try as I might to chase after this thing. Although, being in the middle of the map, it does give him all that freedom to move around. The idea is trying to get him into a corner, which easier said than done. Easier said than done, but... At least if I can keep consistent like this though, it's almost impossible for him to do damage. A couple of stray secret missiles will probably hit me, but repairs can help negate that and of course my armor alone helps negate that. On top of fighters, point defense and all the other stuff. I just gotta be good about keeping the Widowmakers alive and of course this Dauntless. As we reveal the stronghold and it's making itself an easy target there because quite frankly, he probably did the smartest thing with the stronghold and he did not deploy his fighters which would have visually given away where the stronghold was. But the downside of that though is he has no defensive fighters for these torpedoes that I'm about to unload on him. As we get ourselves in a good position we try and at least make my life a lot easier. Try and engage this stronghold a little bit. Probably not going to go into an asteroid belt to fight him but with this torpedo waves, we're just going to straight up take out, a, I believe, a third of his health there. He is sending out bombers though, which, again, those are bombers and not really fires health. It doesn't look like they even got, were close enough to shoot down the torpedo. So, there goes a good third of the stronghold's health. Just an instant, just from the torpedoes alone. And, of course, with the Death Mirror not having the ability to do any high high energy turns, it is pretty vulnerable to my bronze size and lances as well. It's kind of stuck there until he decides to engage with it, which he's just content to let it sit there, I guess. He is content to let it sit there, and for the first time, I am stuck in a situation where I can't saw it run. So, Brace for Impact comes up. I do take notable damage, but at least it's better than losing like over half my health, is what happened before with the poor cruisers. We still managed to weather that storm relatively well. As I throw down a second Cobra, I have like four frigates out now for spine potential. And this one just soaks the board. It soaked a lot of damage. And the idea ultimately is to hopefully have these Cobras shoot down his fighters, weaken them up. So that way it makes my torpedo assaults that much more stronger if he refuses to refresh them. Which he has plenty of opportunities to refresh them. 
The one thing with his play, though, is that he is not refreshing his fighters, even with this massive window he has right there. So that's a huge oversight by him, and one that I'm trying to punish with that Cobra play. Because it is a replenishable f source of ships for me that can reliably spot, and if possible, realistically can get them really damn close to a ship too. Hell, this stronghold's getting murdered horribly. As he decides to try and go in aggressively here, I don't think he's going after the Widowmaker, but he is trying for a ram in assault nonetheless. He's got the lock on set up, and Manta Bombers also come in. This is going to hurt the Dauntless a little bit there. I do not brace for impact though. Hell, I should have done an auger disruption there. That was kind of spurred a moment, like had to think fast there. And with my lack of experience from using auger disruptor, that is probably a fault there. But the one main thing I'm not happy with is I should have just flew this Widowmaker away further. Just kept it going away because I don't even think this stronghold has extended sensors. So I could have easily sought run with this thing. Kind of easily kept it hit in, and I'm hoping for one good torpedo wave to kill this thing off. And I do decide to warp out with this uh, Dauntless, try and keep it alive, because it is pretty essential, I want to argue, for the rest of my fleet. Stronghold does go down, it does get heavily damaged in a moment, as Seeker Missiles are about to hit it, but even with the generators down, it is going to get out. Maybe not for a second match, but for a third match, it will be available to provide, hopefully, essential support. Although I don't think this is subordination is very much welcome. And now... We are left with dealing with this Custodian. We are doing damage to it there. We have the shields down, the four lances peppering it, and he did not decide to do a brace for impact. Hell, I'd argue he's gained no value of that lock-on right now. None at all. I just need to try and get through that fighter screen. As I'm just realizing for the first time, my Widowmaker's kind of revealed there. Just a little bit. Hell, it almost died to a blind fire uh, Seeker Missile Barrage. So... This is going to get a little bit awkward for me. It's my one main strength because I neglected it so much is now vulnerable to getting sniped hell. I should be just moving straight forward, straight directly away from the Custodian because again, this has more speed than the Custodian despite its air cache favor. So, it is possible it can hide. It almost made it out, but as it stands now, I lose my vision yet again. And quite frankly, I think I will need to get some enhanced sensors there, especially on my Dauntless, because what that will do is allow me to deploy the Cobra even further forward, get it more closer to the Custodian, and ideally in a position where it can't just instantly be bored by the autocast boarding attempt. So, not to mention the fact that I could put the extended sensors on Overlord 2, because in this situation I did lose the Dauntless, so extended sensors will help alleviate that, but the two Widowmakers... If I'm good about my control, I need to be a little bit better on my control and awareness of them. I don't think this is an issue. It's just a lot of damn kiting, a lot of damn chasing the Widowmaker, or the Custodian Ratter. But the Lances are doing work there. He is practically about at half health, and that was mostly from Lances alone, so this is bearing fruit. The one point I need to point out, though, is that I feel like I can beat Tau. I can't beat Tao in straight up engagement there, because really all he's did was just run away from me all day. And if I'm not using my boosters, if I just keep Salt running, even with the lack of extend sensors, he can't really do crap there. Especially with the Dauntless just able to jam his sensors, even if he was to just manually fly within sensor range. I don't think there's much he can do about it. It's a different, ex different story when he has his cruisers and all that though, but... This Kain is going to continue on basically till the end of the match, and with him basically choosing the Cruiser Clash as him the defender, he is going to win just because of that. That's the main thing that we're going to have to, well really with the Air Cache in general, because Eldar can technically do the same thing. Hell, they're kind of encouraged to a little bit because of their fragile state. They're built... Their lack of shields, their lack of armor, they kind of are encouraged to do the exact same thing. So it's not really much different with Eldar. The only difference is they don't really have boosters to be able to recharge. They have a completely different form of mobility. So they don't get the, what is it, the capacitor recharge, the combustion gauge, boosters, whatever it is that recharges the boosters anyway. So Eldar are a little bit easier to pin down for that reason, because they are, even with the Void Stalker going 225 speed, 
It can be run down just by my overlords and tyrants alone eventually. Even in a situation where you can't do damage. As it stands though, I'm, su I'm just suffering this matchup because of vision. So we'll just advance on to the end here. So it like, it's like I said, this goes on to the very end. I did damage his engine so at one point here, which allowed me to get a lot of good opportunities to hit him in. A lot of extra damage, but that's easily rectified once he finally gets the repairs on. It was only a temporary damage, so that helps a ton, but imagine alone what the extended sensors would do in a situation like that. Just um, finally, finally kill, pin down the custodian. But as it stands now, it's my own mistakes that are causing this defeat. And not really so much his own play. I would argue that thing is so close to heavily damaged there as we're going to find out as he tries to commit to this engagement. But there's only 20 seconds left on the clock. He's not going to be able to do it. But this thing is so close to being heavily damaged by a single torpedo salvo. Again, I need to point out he's been neglecting his fighters because he's using the bomber so abrasively. But... The timer's going to run out, the Overlord's going to survive this exchange, and we're going to move on to the second match. One of my own choice, at least. So, we're going to go with the Space Station Assault. We're going to have, uh, we're going to at least have a real fight going on, maybe, because he has to come to me. He has to commit to fighting me. And with two of my ships heavily damaged, at least, I will be mostly standing good favor there. Good condition once the third match comes around. I do lose an Overlord, though. Which is a bit of a problematic thing because I would miss out on two of my disruption overcharges. At least two lances that have that upgrade because the uh, retribution unfortunately does not have it. And the points kind of make it a little bit cumbersome to field as well with the overlords. Unless I want to do a drastically different fleet there which means the tyrants essentially like I normally be fielding. If I at least want to get the Widowmaker in as well. But even then that's like a single Widowmaker so... I really do like the idea of having the second Widowmaker kind of as a backup. Is as I pointed out, it's a little bit of bad control, quite frankly, there. Bad awareness, not keeping an eye on the Widowmakers, and of course just making bad calls with them. Is the one thing I'm going to need to correct, just be a little more consistent there. And at least with a Space Station Assault, I don't need to worry so much about the Widowmaker here. I just don't have means to chase him, as I mentioned before. So, if he really doesn't want to fight me there, he's just just gonna stall out the clock again so if in essence the air cache the at least the way he's playing the air cache there just leads on to uninteresting matches there because he's not even committing to a real engagement especially with something like a custodian that takes up so much points too and limits the rest of his fleet but we're gonna advance on forward I have a good standing fleet here I have Lots of lances to constantly be hitting him despite his little over... What is it? His sort of... Well, I forget what the engine upgrade's called. That basically gives him a hollow field. It's got like an EMV or something type of engine boosters. Some odd phrase that the Tau utilize for their technology. That's all I know. But basically it's a four, 40 accuracy reduction in hollow field whenever he's boosting. So, even with that, the lances are still going to hit... They're going to slowly chip him down and what he's going to try and do here for this engagement, he's going to try and spread out and overwhelm me. Try and hit with seeker missiles from multiple sides, quite frankly. He doesn't do that at first though, he's content with trying to stall, stay in his side of the map there and just try and hit me with seeker missiles. And if I, if anything from this championship so far, I am good about these stalemates. This uh, just stand at each... Stand across the map and shoot torpedoes. I know how to deal with that. And one of the other techniques I'm probably going to start utilizing when he starts doing that is I'm going to be using decoy torpedoes, as it were, to try and draw his fighters away from the rest of his fleet. I don't do that right away, though, because I'm kind of content he would be just poking and come forward to me, really. Instead, he decides to stay on his half of the map, just try and get some damage with the secret missiles, which... He's going to find out the hard way. It's not really going to be very effective. Because again, it doesn't penetrate armor. So my ships make an excellent, excellent shield. If Especially if I can squeeze out, sneak in a brace for impact that doesn't really punish me. When he decides to engage finally. Because he is taking his time with this deployment for some reason there. 
I don't know how difficult it is to play a custodian, a protector, and two castellans, but that's technically what it feels. And for the first minute or two, he is going to stand his ground there and try and see if he can break through my defenses. Hell, keep in mind, I would have a dictator in this matchup, like I normally do, but I kind of did forgot about replacing it, changing it back from the tyrant there when I finally swapped the Marses back to the overlord. So, that even with that, we're gonna he's going to find out he can't break through this wall. And quite frankly, I can't break through his wall, just at least through brute force. So, that's where this technique that I've been conspiring ever since I did my Space Marine videos the against Tau, I finally have an opportunity to start utilizing it. I just... When exactly to start doing? Okay, there we go. This is the first example of an action. It does need a little bit of work though, because the idea is to have one torpedo at least several seconds ahead while shooting at an awkward angle so they don't get immediately shot down. That's what I'm going to be trying to experiment with here to start utilizing, and it works amazingly well against fighters of any faction. Because with the 6,000 unit uh, activation range of the fighters, they do get drawn out and even though those are Castellans, they did manage to reach them. They did probably do the damage they need to, because again, they're Castellans and they're small in comparison to Protector and Custodian, but this is my strategy, this is my tactic. As we stand our ground, we do like a two second uh, burst or delay before I fire the air torpedoes, and this is technically my ultimate strategy for dealing with a Custodian, at least in straight up engagements. I just gotta make it more second nature so I can actively do it because it feels so counterintuitive to me. Because I talked about before when I fought Imperial Navy last time about staggering your torpedoes, giving your opponent the ultimate value with their point defensive fighters. This is kind of the same thing, it's just deliberately being done that way. As we force the repair of some kind from one of his ships, so we are getting. We are getting somewhere. With this torpedo strategy, it's just not exactly on the Castellan or the Custodian, rather. As I try and aim towards the Protector this time, get some extra torpedoes on there, and I am deliberately trying to miss with the torpedo, the first torpedo, because look at it, draw all those fires out a little bit. They do turn right back around, so it's not perfect. Because the idea is to try and keep the torpedoes, the first torpedoes, alive as long as possible, which means deliberately shooting them at kind of the max range of the fighters there, so that way they have to spend so much time just flying to it, never mind just shooting it. So, he gets bored of this charade, he tries to get close, Manta Bombers again are denied. I don't know if I need to silent run with the Retribution, mind you, but it still works. It still works and I do have a little bit of a window where it can still engage with this little window, despite, yeah, because this beacon is not perfectly placed to completely block out that path because this asteroid belt is kind of really awkward for me. I don't think I can lie about that because it's still two and a half damage a second for me despite the 75 armor on my prow so I tend to turn my attention to Castellans since he's putting no effort at all trying to move them and control them and the protectors kind of in the way. I don't do that little decoy tactic because it's only two fighters. It's not nearly as scary. The fight torpedoes are eventually going to get through without doubt. It's just a matter if they hit the protector. Which I don't get to see the labors of my fruit as I turn my attention to the custo custodian here. Spur up my fleet a little bit. The retribution is going to be defending the right side. The tyrant and overlord are going to be more the middle and on the left there. Especially since I have these fighters to help shoot down the manta bombers. Because they get shot down immediately, there's no real effort put into that. And secret missiles are continuing to come over on the right side. So he is trying to overwhelm me here. This is where I try, as I mentioned before, use the Cobras to basically start shooting down his fighters. They're not really going to be doing much else aside from maybe an occasional torpedo. Just shoot down. Shoot down his fighters as much as possible. And apparently he just decided to... I don't know if he ran it there or if he shot Manta Bombers at it. I think, no, he just, I think he managed to get a ram. I don't think I see bombers docking the Kistonians. So, could have done that a little bit better, but I have two more of those to yes. throw around. And not to mention, these, the Cobras ha are pretty decent blocking Micro Warp Jump too, if I can be mindful of that as well. 
I do second guess deploying the Cobras over because I thought for a moment maybe using the Cobras to fight off the Castellans since they are so isolated and good torpedoes will pretty much kill them as well but I'm content to using them defensively here as he turns his attention to these beacons now turns his attention to the beacons which is more mostly can fire at this point I'm kind of okay with losing them as right now I still got a pretty good yes, defensive formation I am taking some damage but I eventually start using the reload mechanic to keep the fighters refresh get faster repairs and of course help speed up the process of these Cobras too so speeding up the recharge on them so this retribution I'm kind of like done being harassed by these Castellans so what I'm gonna basically it's gonna happen for the rest of this game for this retribution it's not even gonna move almost there's a certain point here where I just let it sit down facing the Castellans and just Understood. lob torpedoes whenever I could think of it at the Castellans. And all the while his macro batteries and lances are going to be hitting the protector over on the far side there. That is what's basically going to happen at some point. Then I'm going to focus my attention entirely on this overlord, this tyrant for defending against the custodian. As once again he starts to push on forward. I don't even uh, try the salt run this time because again I have full fighter waves and I do have the point defense and thankfully that gambit pays off despite how intimidating those manta bombers can be. It works here and with the reload I'm going to have my fighters replenished relatively soon because I should not ever expect my bombers to do damage to that custodian. Not at least I'm sure that his fighters are completely gone. Because it's kind of a waste of defensive fighters at that point. I leave myself vulnerable to a vicious counterattack. So the ordnance bays, the fighter bays are just strictly going to be refreshing my fighters from here on out. It is a slow, slow, tedious game here, but we are in good shape. Because I, I believe I still have a repair available for the battle station. No, I just actually used it. So it's going to repair pretty much all its health anyway. That's just currently lost. So I just need to deal with these manta bombers. So... Salt run's done, that's easily negated. Gotta that slowly start turning around my ships there as the Overlord, the Tyrant starts yes, readjusting to take the place of the Overlord. Ship They're ready. gonna essentially swap positions as I try and get Understood. this Overlord out of an awkward position because it's kind of too close to the battle station right now. Especially since I see him committing to this engagement. It's probably not gonna work very well because I have four shield transfers still available so I can recharge these shields twice. So long as this beacon's still alive. And another flaw to a strategy, as I come to realize in a moment, co I could just spawn the Cobras directly behind them. Just spawn the Cobras, start shooting down his fighters, and just hug them. Just hug them with these Cobras. Hell, I even managed to somehow get a torpedo hit in. Don't ask me how with so many fighters, but I managed to do it. So, he's committing to his secret missile, he's committed to his fighters. So I'm just going to take these hits and trust in the fighters to take down these uh, the Manta Bombers. And again, it pays off. Pays off really nicely here. And I remember what I said, these Cobras are doing the main thing I want them to do. They are shooting down those fighters and eventually making them really damn vulnerable to the torpedoes. I do think that that third one needs to be a little bit closer though if I'm going to have its point defense contribute though. But... Shields are recharging for the battle station. The tyrant's standing his ground, taking the hits beautifully. Although, this is probably a bit of a bad turn here. Just a little bit, because I think the 95 armor would probably have been better. But the fighters shoot down secret missiles anyway, so... It wasn't a bad mistake. I just feel like maybe the brace for impact, 95 armor would have been better at taking those secret missiles. Although, really, it's because the shields came back up, I think is why I repositioned tyrant, because... So far it's not any real risk as I'm already getting my overlords and the time's ready to go in for another push or another, another shield basically. Give it time to recharge its health back up. And I don't even think again the Manta Bombers were denied. And at this point now, I believe he has no fighters at all left to his fleet. No fighters at all left to that custodian. So this gives me an amazing window to try and push up aggressively. Especially since the Cobras have actually been getting some torpedo hits too. So he evades with this. This would be a good window for an Augur Disruptor. Because he's going to micro warp jump in a moment. Going to micro warp jump in a moment as I turn to try and get that good prow fire. 
So we get some hits in. He does try to charge in Kamikaze, but fighters are about to come back up. Fighters are about to come back up. Sadly, I don't have a silent run for this battle station as this thing just dies immediately. Tries as gambit as he might, it just died immediately. His Manta Bombers just died. The Custodian for once is finally dead, but I, there was no kiting for him this time. He just decides to commit Kamikaze and try and get the final blow. So, we did kill the Custodian finally, so we're going to get to see something a little bit different for a change. It doesn't solve my problem how to deal with the kiting issues, but I think I talked about that already a good amount. Extended sensors on more of my ships, at least the Dauntless. So that way I have a good secondary fission, or way to get fission on top of the two Widowmakers, which only my own stupidity, I think, will cause me to lose both the Widowmakers, unless he's incredibly diligent and he has good foresight on knowing where the Widowmakers are, because realistically, I probably would hang one back somewhere safe, so that way it's not with the rest of my fleet, because I shouldn't need two Widowmakers there together. I shouldn't, anyway. But... With the second Overlord gone, I decide, or my first Overlord gone, I decide instead to go with the Retribution, two Tyrants, and a Dauntless. Not exactly true to the strategy I had in mind for fighting Tau head-on, but it's still a lot of power. We still have the Retribution as macro batteries. We still have good amount of Lances. They just don't have the Disruption Overcharge on the Retribution. But in all honesty, it's still just as powerful as a single Overlord with its two Lances. And then it can even do more damage on the hull in comparison to the single Overlord. I just don't think I want to go that top heavy because it does deny me that Widowmaker. It does deny me that Widowmaker and it does deny me that utility I need for Dauntless 2. Because I can only get really one or the other. I can't get the Augur Disruptor of the Dauntless or the two Wid well, or the Widowmaker there if I were to go. Actually, if I took out the Dauntless, I wonder, I think, and replace them for both the Overlords, I could get two Widowmakers, so that is maybe a possible fleet composition as well. I just more or less am fielding the Dauntless there for the extra utility with the Augur Disruptor. And again, one of my Overlords is down anyway, so I couldn't exactly field that strategy regardless. But this is where... We start utilizing Augur Disruption, hopefully to its full effect. It's still going to take a little bit of practice getting used to, because he fields in our stronghold. He has two protectors and is saucing this fleet this time around. So, he has no wardens to spot for him, which is probably why he's sending one protector out so far forward by itself. Which I am fine with. I'm going to spot that without a problem until he decides to throw a beacon down. Which I don't even know if those protectors even have a beacon, I'm not going to lie. Yes, I think he has the micro warp jump and the capacitor to boost to recharge are his two skills for those protectors. So, he has no beacons. He has to manually face check, as it were. And with the Widowmaker, we already know how that bears for me at the start of this engagement. We already know how it's going to go. Hell, he only is conceding to a single Manta Bomber squad. So, he's leaving himself really vulnerable, although these torpedoes are going to be still going to be incredibly difficult to hit with his high energy turn and all that. A widespread will hopefully give me a single hit, but it also makes it a lot easier for him to shoot down. As Augur Disruptor comes on out, we see the bombers, we just wait to see where the bomber's going. I do preemptively silent run this Widowmaker, thinking the secret missiles and bombers were coming after it. Hell, it still paid off. The bombers were going after the Widowmaker, regardless of all that, so it still pays off. We jammed them, so this gas cloud, once I stop boosting, is going to give me immediate uh, coverage. I'm going to be immediately hitting until the sensors come back up. And we're already doing notable damage to the Protector, but kind of hard to chase that thing down, as it were. Because, again, the air cash favor is in ridiculously high turn radius with the high energy turn in, of course, the favor itself, because what is that? 20 degree turn speed, I believe, for the cruisers. I believe it's 20 degree speed because the Tau have really high turn radius for all their ships in comparison to all the other sh vehicles. So, 
they can turn around really quickly on top of the high energy turn, which basically just triples the turn radius. So chase them down is not going to be easy. But we destroyed the Custodian, so I'm feeling really ecstatic about that. Even though it was more his own uh, Kamikaze play that did it. The defense was kind of impeccable, pretty damn good. Probably needed to be a little more careful of the Seeker missiles. Because they were what was doing the majority of the damage to the space station. And when he committed with the railguns, that's so easy to deny there with my ships in the way. And hell, I have so many shield recharges as well for windows when I don't have ships to block. So, he's going to have a hard time taking down the station directly at least, if nothing else. But Cobra comes on out to try and spot. We start pressuring forward because he is starting to get wedged himself in a, a corner here, which is exactly what I want, quite frankly. In all honesty, this is kind of what I want. Get him into a corner, but with four ships, though, I'm not going to be able to lock them all down. Hell. He's bringing this stronghold in the boost, and what I do here is I decide to turn completely around, disengage from the the protectors, the saucers, and I'm trying, going to try to deal with the stronghold. Because once it gets in close, it's going to do a ridiculous amount of damage, so it does kind of need to die. Especially since I don't have a window where I've been shooting torpedoes at it to soften up too, so... This is a full health demiurg, full health stronghold, so... I need to take it seriously. If it was at half health or something, it could probably die of some stray fire and occasional torpedoes I reposition. But, Salt Run, unfortunately, this time did not pay off well because I squandered the disruption that time. My Dauntless wasn't exactly in range to jam all the ships, so that's one of the things I'm going to need to fine tune and learn. But, a couple of torpedo hits, supercharged void shield, and the. Tyrant is going to go on in and draw out the mining laser, which apparently he has on autocast. He apparently has it on autocast because he just expended it there and it does absolutely nothing. So that charge was expended. He even let his sauce go on out in the panic to make the warp jump out the stronghold. But now we're in my comfort zone. We're in the close range skirmish, and while I am a little bit spread out, this isn't a custodian. This isn't like something with like six bomber waves at least. So I have a realistic chance of just shooting down one of the bombers really quick. He did time out the bombers really well to get her there. But even then the damage wasn't significant with the brace for impact helping out. So now we're just getting, getting close and personal with these protectors. No shields. I'm hitting the side armor there so he doesn't even get the 75 armor. As he desperately, desperately tries to kill off this tyrant. He is trying desperately and he's not going to get it. He is not going to get it because remember these tires have power ram. They still have the power ram. And while these seeker missiles are a bit of a nuisance, they're not going to kill the ship on its own thankfully. Although, I can no longer repair it with this ship so it is going to be a weak link. A little bit of a weak link as I hunt down the last of his ships. The Demiurg is going to be easy to run down. This protector is going to be a bit of a problem though. It's going to be a bit of a problem trying to chase down, especially when I'm trying to take these Manta Bombers seriously still. I wonder if I should just seriously brace for impact or just held off on the orders there. Because maybe the Retribution could have just shot them down safely, but I need to preserve myself. I've been in this situation plenty of times with the dang Custodian trying to hunt it down. So, I know to try and preserve my fleet. It's the one thing I've basically been focused on this entire championship is trying to preserve my fleet. As I try and boost on forward, I do a bit of a mistake here and get a little too aggressively with the Dauntless, especially the Widowmaker. The Widowmaker is pushing on too far forward. I don't need his vision at this point because I can't even shoot at the Protector anymore. But I do have the Lance Fire trying to bring down this stronghold. It is heavily damaged. I try and disengage, but again. I am forgetting about my Widowmaker there, as it is trying to engage into a suicide attempt on the Protector. So, again, I told you before how I need to be a little more diligent and aware of my Widowmaker. Because now, what he's going to do is just run away from me all game. He's going to run away from me all game, even though I think I can say without a doubt I've won this match in terms of the combat itself. 
This is the only resource. This is the only option he has left. And if I just saw it run and stay hit all game, he's not even going to get a sing extra shot off. If I were to just play slow and wait for him to make a mistake like he's doing. So we're just going to advance to the end. Alright, so we're getting ourselves really close to this matchup here. And while I am losing my ships, it looks like, it looks like things are falling apart. Part of the reason for that, though, is what I did throughout this match is I split up my fleets into two subsections to try and pincer them, lock them down, but his micro warp jump made that a little bit difficult to do. Even if his speed is the exact same as the Gastonians, this, may this wild goose chase is still continuing, folks. Because this is basically all he did for this entire match is just run away from me. Because he has no real way to contend with me, and of course I've been boosting as often as I can to try and keep whittling him down, trying to chase him and wedge him into a corner, but it shows that the extended sensors and losing Widowmakers is a big deal. Because that would give me so much more breathing room as I spawn another uh, Cobra to try and reveal him. He is down still the same health he had, even with all the time he has recharging or repairing. In the end, he just runs, he continues to run, but what happens here for this final match is, quite frankly, I was the defender of this cruiser clash, so all his running attempts means absolutely nothing, as he tries desperately to run this thing down. He tries desperately to run this thing down and kill it. But, it's like I said not too long ago, if I just keep Sun run constantly, permanently, and just, really, just stall out the clock, kind of like how I did with Eldar, deliberately playing defensively, I can guarantee almost a 50-50 win rate against Tau. At least air cash Tau, because if he's never going to commit, I'm never going to lose if I'm defender. Which isn't really exciting prospect, unfortunately. It's not really enjoyable. And it's mostly because of air cash favor above all else, because if he w didn't have the air cash favor, he's actually going the same speed as my ships, and I don't need to tell you how easy that would be to run down. Especially if I wedge him into a corner like he is right now. Because I just need to reveal his ship, try and hunt him down, and of course he's going to have Salt Run available in a moment, so... It's not like I'm going to be able to kill him, unfortunately. Even though this Cobra is in a beautiful spot, it's just dealing with the Manta Bombers. The Manta Bombers are eventually going to kill off this uh, Cobra, despite it being impossible for him to shoot down any other way. Is the backup uh, Cobras are useful though, but with the lack of the extended sensors of the Widowmaker, I can't reliably get that killing blow, let alone make use of my maximum range, which makes hunting him down so much easier, because look, look at this corner he's wedged in right now. Just I can lance him to death right now with this Retribution. So this is the ultimate problem there. Extended sensors, I would argue, do not help a whole lot. It'll make my life a lot easier, but it doesn't really change much. He just stays out of sensor range and just continue to run away. Just waiting for mistakes, waiting for some opportunity to do damage. And I guess he thinks he's going to win this match, but again, I'm the defender in this outcome. All his efforts, all his running around, is going to be for nothing. But as trying to do these videos for YouTube, for you folks, for everyone watching, I think we could say this is not exactly an enjoyable prospect to be in. Because I just burnt an entire hour on this match. From the first one and third match just going down to him running away from me. But if nothing else from this match, I hope it can potentially point out that I can beat him in a straight up combat. The only reason... I lost my fleet as I did is because I'm trying to boost after him, trying to chase him down. But if I don't do that, if I just silent run, I can guarantee, at least for the final match, because it's randomly decided who's defender, I can at least guarantee a 50-50 chance of winning just because I will sometimes be the defender, sometimes I won't. I can at least guarantee that if I just silent run and don't boost at all, and stall out the clock like he's doing, I can guarantee that, at least. If I can keep the Widowmaker alive, I can whittle him down, chase him down, and get him in a corner, and kill him with just the lances alone. I just gotta stop with these stupid mistakes of getting my Widowmakers killed. I'm not gonna lie. 
What a, the charge in and leaving my Widowmaker out of place was stupid. But I am confident on this match alone I can beat Tao.